Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer and I'm very excited because we are going to start a new series of democracy for today. We are gonna finally come around and make the South Korea run that you guys have requested so much. So let's go ahead here and let's start out with South Korea and as we're doing that I want to talk about the theme of this run through. So as you know we're generally trying to turn a country on its head and doing the opposite of what it's currently doing. And I think for South Korea, that would be fantastic to do with the Liberals. So we want to make South Korea a very liberal place that has excellent healthcare, education, GDP. It also should be a very permissive culture. And as we're setting that up, um, I think Democratic Party, to be honest, uh, doesn't sound too bad. And um, let's go for a yellowish color here because that is kind of liberal justice. No, no, no. Uh, liberal justice wing. Why not? I think this is fine. And we are going to go ahead here right into the game begin our term in office and see what this country is about. We're going to talk about the interface and the uh, challenges of this country in a moment. But basically what I want to do is I want to make the liberals incredibly happy. So it is going to be sort of a hipster run over here. That's going to be a little bit diff more difficult because you can see it's only 46% of the population right now. They're not particularly happy and that is largely due to all of these uh, sort of uh, harsh measures over here, ID cards, wiretapping, censorship. So we will need to get rid of all of that. But of course it's not as easy as that because we need to keep in mind the conservatives. And the way that this game works is there are a couple of groups like liberals and conservatives that are just the opposite. So everyone is either conservative or liberal. So membership here is just the inverse of one another. And principally when you make one happy you're sort of screwing with the other. And um, the other area where that is happening is with the socialists and capitalists. All of the other groups are sort of more standing off in, in and of themselves. They don't have a direct opposite. Right. So that is going to be that. Uh, we do want to be moving. Uh, let's uh, look at the political compass over here. Curiously enough, the game doesn't consider uh, Korea to be overly conservative. It's somewhat here, but generally we want to move pretty much to the bottom of this um, of this compass. We also want to move uh, probably a little bit to the left here. So I don't want to go all out socialist. I would probably want to be at least centrist. So somewhat, let's say, Barack Obama, Tony Blair. Maybe a little bit to the left of that. Let's say Scandinavian type um, welfare state, potentially. But before we go there, we will need to talk about Korea. We will need to be talking about our strategy and how we stand here. So let's start out with the positives because there is one positive thing to be seen other than most other games actually that we have played and that is popularity. We are currently considered to be quite popular. Usually you do start out with a much lower approval rating and that's great because that does feed into slightly higher political capital per turn which is generally lovely. The downside is we are not really gaining that much from our ministers per turn. You can see most of them are not so happy and that is largely due to the fact that a lot of them are actually associated with the parents. Can I see them over here? Yeah, I can see them over here. So three of these guys actually are linked to the parents and parents are crummy folk as usual. Um, and that is, and here we do get to some of the status effects, there is a crisis in terms of respiratory disease. As there is in most countries, so that is well something that we have met uh, a couple of times, but it does lead to a pretty big negative modifier on the parents. So that is something that we will need to address at some point. There are also some other things. Uh, we do have alcohol abuse, which is somewhat of a problem, but honestly, it's not that bad. Yes, crime level is a little bit higher, health is a little bit bad, worse, but we'll get that under control. The other big thing that you can already see over here is motorists are incredibly unhappy. They are strongly opposed to our rule. We do have two party donors uh, towards that, so we would love to not lose these people completely. If you look at what is influencing them, you can see it's pretty much two things, which is really one thing. That is traffic congestion and gridlock. So, traffic congestion, there's simply quite a lot of car usage. That does mean there's a lot of traffic congestion, which basically, by the way, also feeds into respiratory disease and a lower environment rating. And the low environment rating, again, influences um, the respiratory disease, so that's actually a double effect. 
uh, from car usage. So we will need to get that under control. Um, it's also again leading to the traffic congestion and traffic congestion in turn is leading to gridlock. All of that makes commuters, motorists, all of them very, very unhappy. That is something that we need to be uh, getting under control. Foreign policy, we've got something unique here, the North Korean threat. It's dependent on military spending and foreign relations and I do not necessarily want to go all in on the military spending. We want to be a hippie community here a little bit more. So yeah, let's get rid of that. Illegal immigration crisis, conservatives dislike that. Well, we'll need to see what we can do. Cyber warfare, mostly a problem because it lowers our economy, uh, which is nevertheless doing kind of okay. Uh, we've got a little bit of environmental protests, some gig economy, which is a debatable negative effect. Uh, pollution, that's not great because environmentalists dislike that and of course it does have an influence on health. And skills shortage, again, does influence GDP. So that's basically all of the negative effects with some uh, good positive ones, private space industry and uh, technological advantage. Doesn't really help us that much though. So that's basically the country as it is. Uh, there is a huge problem though, and that is the deficit. The deficit is a whooping nearly 20%. Yeah, 17.6% of our overall spending does come from government borrowing, and that is not sustainable. That will collapse fast. So we will need to address the deficit, at least in the short run, by looking at what we can do. Um, the probable solve to that is probably not going to be on the income side. And we do have a comparatively high tax rate already. Middle income people hate that. Um, and they are quite unhappy with our rule as is. So I don't think we can do a lot of tax hikes. We will need to look at the spending side, at least until we get GDP under control. That being said, it's looking okay-ish. It's looking okay. We want to go for a good liberal play here. And we will be able to do that, I think. But it is going to be a challenge because right now our popularity is largely driven by the Conservatives. As we are enacting things that make Liberals a little bit more happy, the Conservatives will not be so happy. And we will need to be quite careful in how we manage especially their membership. So how can we get people to become more Liberal and only later make policies that flip the approval ratings between these two groups? It's never a hard cut, but that is probably something that we want to go, at least in the long run. Now, in the short run, we do have more pressing issues. And I think one of them is the parents, because we need to make sure that our ministers do give us a little bit more political capital. And that is the motorists, because all of this up here, all of this situation there is just really not great. It makes a lot of people, this is 51% of the population, very, very upset. So these are, I think, the things that we want to address here as the first things in our first term, at least. Make sure that we got our bases running, that we have our people supporting us in times of need. Now, there's one more thing that I need to talk about, and that is what happens when you do set up the game is basically the game is seeded with certain parameters here for all of these policies. And then the game does simulate that for a number of turns, which you can probably see somewhere over here. Yeah, you can see the game starts and then it, there is a simulation that is being run through, I think, 20 turns, uh, 20 turns or so, whatever uh, amount of uh, little boxes this is. And you come to a steady state. Now, this system isn't perfect. Especially sometimes when uh, Clive, the developer, changes things and parameters and how things interact, it takes a while to get things going. And I've had situation where you hit the next turn and everything sort of crumbles into each other. And um, yeah, you basically do not get to the same steady state as you were before. Now, that's not necessarily a problem, but it is a problem for these runs here. Because what I tend to do is I stare at this screen here quite a long time to develop a good strategy that I can then talk about to you guys. And to avoid building up a strategy that basically is built on wrong premises, what I usually do is when I start this up as part of my preparation, I do hit the next turn button. Now, because I did that, I know for a fact that there's one more thing that is not represented on the board yet, but that would come into effect next turn. And that is a doctor strike. We are not being warned about that yet. We would be warned about this if we hit that, but it would be too late. At that point, it would 
already be above the star trigger. Now, I know that, I could pretend that I don't, but I feel that it's a little bit of an oversight of the game that they're not telling you that something is about to happen. Because later on in the game, after you've started it up, you would know. So, I've decided that we will go with that knowledge and we will react on that knowledge. Because, here's the important thing, we need to make absolutely sure that pa the parents are happy. To get that, I want to get rid of the respiratory disease for sure, but we cannot possibly afford another big negative influence here. And I do think, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that Dr. Strike would be a massive negative um, effect on both parents and um, I think retired people. Retired people for now are not the worst, but I would really make want to make sure that parents are happy. So, by the way, didn't talk about that, but I would like to go for some achievements. Now, there are not that many liberal achievements that are in the game, um, and I don't actually want to go for them because they are a little bit too weird in my perspective. So that's Festival of Firearms, Food, Drugs, Alcohol. All of these things are not necessarily to me what... Um, liberalism on the social axis does depend on. So remember this is not the type of American liberalism, but this is more being a permissive culture, if you want. So liberal in the sense that you want uh, social freedoms that you can do th certain things. Now, back to our issue with the parents. Um, what we need to do to prevent the doctor strike is we could of course uh, tweak the labor laws, we could make strikes impossible or so on, but I don't think that fits in well with the theme. So what I'm gonna do here is I am actually going to have a look whether we can introduce a new law, and that is workers on boards. So we are going to give a legal representation rights to uh, workers in their companies, including healthcare companies. That makes uh, trade unions quite happy. Of course, socialism goes up, socialists are happy. It does do a number on our productivity and working week, and capitalists are not so happy. But cu crucially, it does prevent strikes to a much higher degree. This is somewhat of a German model, so I think this is going to be kind of interesting. Let's do it. It will cost us 12 political capital, so this is a rather high investment. We're going to max it out because I don't know exactly how much we need, but I think it's going to be useful. Notice trade unionist membership is going to go up by a whooping 16.5%, and socialist membership is also going to go up by 5 percentage points. So. That is a bit critical because I think for now trade unions don't really like us. Yeah, they pretty much aggressively hate us. So that's that's a big issue. Nevertheless, that is going to experience a big jump over here, which should hopefully be um, doable in the long run. Also in the long run, we will need to look at the gig economy. Now, we have eight political power, and one of the nicest policies that you can actually do in the entire game, it's one of the best things that you can do, is community policing makes liberals happy, increases liberalism, so long-term benefit to us, it decreases crime, alcohol abuse, unemployment, racial tensions, crime, and there is no downside to that unless you specifically want to play for conservatives. So let's go ahead with that. I think it's fantastic. It does cost us some money, but it's not that big. I mean, we have a, bill, a deficit here of 27 trillion per quarter. Um, what's 800 billion on that, right? Uh, alcohol abuse, that's, it's a nice side effect that that is going to go down, but I'm really in this for the fact that it's going to bring up liberalism and make liberals a little bit more happy. So the switch to them is going to be a little bit less hard because right now when we change people from being um, conservative to liberal, we are making them less happy. And that is a problem because we need to find some solution um, to, well, basically, you know, we... We need to, make, need to make them happy first, then increase their membership, and only then make uh, conservatives unhappy. And that is a bit um, difficult to achieve. But yeah, I think this is, this is a good approach for now. Okay, anything else then that we want to do with our remaining political power? We don't have that much. Now, there are certain things for the for the entire car spectrum here that I would like to include. But there are few ones that are immediately helpful. I mean, cycling campaign brings down car usage, which is lovely. Oh, but there's a downside to that because it also brings down rail usage and bus usage. 
which I think has a modifier of around about one third. So this is only one third of the drop that you would expect. This is not actually that beneficial then. Hmm, interesting. We could bring up state rail companies. That is a little bit more um, expensive though. It would be a huge positive boost also to productivity. And productivity, remember, is I think driven by the skills shortage. No, that does not actually figure in here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Right, then we could just do some minimal stuff. For example, I think the tobacco awareness campaign might be a good one. Where is it actually? Do we maybe even have it? It's it's one of the it's one of the factors that are driving that are driving the respiratory disease tobacco tax. No, no, it it must be new policy then. Where is it? Well, maybe we can't afford it right now. That's fine then. Okay, anything else then? Well, reforestation. Parents should become more happy, but I'm not sure we can do that immediately. We could do things like a race discrimination act. Keep the country tidy. I mean, these are things that are always very helpful, but yeah, so race discrimination act brings up liberalism and liberal opinion, but brings down conservatives. So slightly harder sale for me because Ah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's let's start out moving into the right direction here early on, and I think that's that's going to be useful. Right there we go. Let's implement that. Yeah, and that's what I thought. Conservatives actually mind, but they don't mind a lot. Liberals, on the other hand, are very happy about that, and it increases liberal membership by a lot. So that's really a big big modifier here, um, which is going to be turning the country into more liberals uh, for over time quite neatly. Okay, let's go to the next turn, see what we get over here. Uh, we have GDP coming up slightly, that's good. Unemployment coming down, that's also of course good. There's basically no crime by the way. Um, education is relatively fine I would say. And yeah, as you can see, Dr. Strike, this would have gone up a little bit if we hadn't implemented the workers on board. So you can see there is already a 2.5% drop and that 2.5% would have pushed us over this and that would not have been great. But on the other hand, this is going to come down a little bit more. So I think we are going to be fine unless unemployment um, improves dramatically. So yeah, as more people are unemployed, the rest of the economy is less likely to go on strike. Because why would they? School sponsorship. A large number of corporations have expressed an interest in investing in our schools. Now, I think we want to prevent that. Our liberals are going to be a little bit more happy. That's good because as we're moving towards slightly more liberals here, that is going to be helpful. You can see there's a slight uptick here, uh, but at least the membership is coming up um, gradually and that's good. That's good. I, I think we already have a slight minority here. Well, it's basically 50-50. Right, so we made our first steps here. At least we prevented the immediate problem. Oh, trade unionists, you still do hate us, don't you? Yeah, and even the workers on boards is just gradually bringing that up. We will need to do something about the gig economy here. And I think the only basic thing that we can do is, is pretty much the labor laws, which is gonna lead to an uncompetitive economy. And I'm <laughs> already going down the full socialist route. Now, speaking of, our deficit, that's a big problem. Really, we cannot potentially afford that. The only reason why that works for the moment is because the debt, the overall debt level is kind of low. So, but that's not gonna keep that way. That is spiraling out of control extremely quickly as we speak. And again, I don't think there's that much that we can do on the income side for now. We will need to address the expenditures. And there's one expenditure here that stands out, that is really high and that is not Strictly, strictly, strictly speaking, necessary. State pensions. I hate to do this, but, ooh, this 28 political power. Right, how much do we have? So we can save up 38. Well, that's basically, so we are keep, we're getting, let's say we're getting 19 per turn. Uh, so that means we should keep at least Seven? Is that right? No. 
9. We could, we should cheat, keep 9. So we can spend 15. But then what we're going to do is we are going to cancel state pensions. It hurts me to do that. It makes the retired people quite happy. But so will private pensions. If private pensions go up and take the place of state, state pensions, and that is going to go up too. So that's not that much of a drop in terms of approval. Still, it just doesn't feel right. Nevertheless, we need a balanced budget. Otherwise, we are going to be screwed. Now, I'm going to go immediately against what I just said and increase the budget for the police force because, well, it's one of the few things that you can do to make conservatives happy and keep the liberals uh, and not make liberals unhappy. So it's a useful thing to do. It's gonna allow us the wiggle room to make conservatives to implement other policies which are gonna make conservatives less happy. So basically we're gonna bring us back to where we are but make liberals a little bit more happy. Kind of a balancing thing, we're gonna do it. Um, it needs to be done. The other thing that actually conservatives and liberals do agree upon and which is therefore gonna be kind of helpful for us is actually the prison system. Um, liberals and conservatives both think that we should have state-of-the-art prisons. Maybe for different reasons, but they do agree on that. And I think that is going to be helpful. So let's do it. It is going to make state employees a little bit more numerous, but these guys actually love us. So I think that's uh, actually pretty good. Right. Anything else then that we want to do? No, we don't really have enough political power anyway. So let's go to the next turn. Uh, DNA database, we are going to go for this one. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. Liberals hate it and we don't actually need to decrease that, but it's okay. Right, deficit still a big issue and here we go. We are going to cancel state pensions. It's a hard sell and I know it. But with this deficit, we are going to be voted out very, very soon. Right, how are things progressing though? And by the way, how is the threat assessment here? The environmental people um, hate us pretty actively. Yeah, and we still haven't done anything to address the motorist situation. But with that amount of political capital, I don't think there's much that we can do, except for the telecommuting initiative. It is very helpful. Car usage drops down a lot. That's over time. Parents like it. Everyone likes it. I like it. It's a good, good policy. Everyone should be able to work from home um, if they want and not clock up any streets. It's it's just a good thing to do. What, what can you say? Um, let's spend our last political point here on smart meters. It's not a big one, but it does help bring the environment, uh, uh, the environment, uh, the environment up a little bit, and the environmentalists on board. So that's good, right? So someone is already walking away. That's not good. Poverty is actually increasing. Yeah, because we did get rid of the um, things there. Liberals and patriots hate that. That's obviously not a good thing. Uh, especially as we are trying to bring up political power of the Liberals. You can see they are almost two-thirds of our population at this point. They hate us. Um, well, they are mildly unhappy. But um, for now, well, it's it's a little bit due to various uh, events that we had here. Can't do much about them, but their membership is increasing. So that is good because it leaves us room to more decisively move away uh, from some of these people towards other groups. So I think that's good. But we do have a first issue here with you. Environmentalists and liberals, um, you are associated with both of these groups. So that does mean you kind of dislike us. Okay, gridlock. Depends on traffic congestion, depends on car usage. That should come down due to the telecommuting initiative, but only ever so slightly. So we need to be more aggressive here, I think, on the transport side. What can we do to what is already influencing that? The cycling campaign, congestion charging. Yeah, congestion charging is useful. It makes motorists less um, prone, uh, less like is less, but it's going to bring down traffic congestion. And that is a huge boost. So I think this is going to be a useful thing to do here. That's the one thing. And the other thing is we do have toll roads also, right? So if we bring that up, Motorists will dislike that. Car usage is actually not going to come down that much. Okay, then that is not the way to go here. Okay, you know what? Let's let's do the cycling. It is usually simply helpful. Um, anything else then that we want to do regarding the thing that we have currently? There's the car tax, there's the hybrid car initiative and all of that. Uh, but for now, these things are not that important. 
Uh, what we could do is the carpooling campaign. Car usage going down is simply always helpful. And we could go with bicycle subsidies, which, you know what, why not? It's only a small effect, especially when you do consider that um, all of this is being reduced because car usage does depend on bus usage. And basically every point of bus usage brings down car usage by a third of these points. So 100% bus usage, bus usage means 33% less car usage. So if you have a policy that influences that drives down all of these three things, you're basically only getting a reduction of car usage by a third. It's just the way it works. Right, that being said, we do have five political power. There's not much we can do with that. What's this? Needle exchange programs. Liberals actually like that. Now, conservatives, of course, don't. But, mm, yeah, I think at this point it's not a dramatic thing to do. I think we are going to keep the five political power and see where we can go with that. You know what? Let's do one more turn here. Alcohol abuse is gone, largely, I think, due to the um, other, uh, due to the effect of community policing. That's it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go with the middle of the road thing here. Capitalists like it. Traffic congestion actually goes down. That's good. Water shortage is coming up. It's coming up dramatically here. Why did we? Ha why are we seeing that jump here in water shortage? The environment that hasn't changed that much, has it? Plant-based diet hasn't changed that much. Interesting. Not sure why that is coming up so quickly here. Hmm. Okay, and by the way, how's our budget looking? Oh, we do uh, generate a nice surplus now. That's good to see. Uh, you are still an issue, but liberals, come on, guys. Do do give me a break here. I'm trying to make you happy, and I really can't do anything about this national sports star being, being not so much helped here. ID cards. It's one of the strongest drivers that makes liberals unhappy. Of course, it does make conservatives a little bit more happy and patriots. So how much are we talking in terms of membership here? That's 70%. Um, the conservatives must be 32. How much, how much patriots do we have? 35. We're talk probably talking about sort of similar levels of so conservatives plus patriots are going to be a similar size of the population as liberals are. Yeah, I think so. So that does mean we can be a little bit more aggressive there, I think. Jesus, we have racial profiling. Yeah, racial tensions go up. Liberals hate it. Doesn't really do anything for us. Let's get rid of that too. Jesus, I didn't even know that was there. And do you know what? Let's cancel this. I think that is going to give us one strong core voter group here. And I'm hoping that Zhijian Shun will actually, I probably botched that name and I'm sorry for that, um, will probably like us a little bit more. That could be helpful too. I think we'll also need to talk about pollution controls because, again, the environment is doing so bad that it drives up the protests. It drives down sort of everything and including respiratory disease. We could do much more to help with the respiratory disease. Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, environment will love it. It's going to take a while to come into effect, but I think we're just early enough for that to really make a difference. So that being said, I think this is a good place to put in a cut. So thank you very much for watching. Do let me know what your thoughts are for what should be included in a liberal run here. And I'm very excited to have you guys back and hope to see you around for the next uh, episode here of South Korea. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, guys.